the order at 7.30. Roll call, please. Mr. Simons. Here. Mr. Boda. Here. Mr. Cram is excused. Mr. Pat Salas. Here. Mr. Horn. Here. Mr. Knotts. Here. Mr. Blackstock. Here. Okay, thank you. All present. Uh, would you lead us in the pledge, Cheryl? Please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of the agenda um, as presented. So, anybody has any additions or deletions to the agenda? If there are none, I'll make a motion to accept the agenda. I'd like to make one. I'd like to move uh, John up from the bottom down here. I'd make him stay here the whole meeting. <laughs> up to the, up to the top. Um, Second. That's all right with you, John. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we can do it right. We can do it right after first thing on the new business, I guess. We can do the proclamation there. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we adjust the agenda to move John up. Are, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the approval of the minutes of April 4, 2016. No one has any changes. I move that we approve the minutes of April 4 as presented. I'll support. It's been moved and supported that we approve the minutes of April 4, 2016. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to public comment. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to talk about anything that's not on the agenda? Okay. Seeing none. We should. We'll move on to the consent agenda. We have C1. March 2016 Building Department Report. We have C2, the March 2016 St. Clair Fire Report. C3 is the April 6, 2016 Historical Commission Minutes. C4 is the March 2016 Marine City Fire Report. C5 is the March 3, 2016 Beautification Committee Minutes. C6 is the Marine City Fire Authority 2016-2017 Budget Request. Um, C7 is the March 9th, 2016 Park Commission Minutes, and the C8 is the March 2016 Investment Income Report, and C9 is the March 2016 Revenue and Expenditure Report. I got a question. Mm -hmm. The Marine City Budget Submission. Fire? Yeah, how do you... What's our piece? It looked like that's the whole thing, right? Do, is it, is it? Um, should be in there. Our piece is about 12%, 12 or 13. I'll have to find it here. 12 or 14, something like that. I just had them put this in here to show you guys. Um, and it's highlighted there. I don't know if yours is highlighted. But how we've dropped the budget from 2014-15, we were at 539,000, and in 1516 we were 424, and our 1617 is uh, 391. So they actually dropped it. I believe it was 8 percent this year. Well, my question was: I looked at this, and I it appears to be the budget of the entire Marine City area fire authority. Correct. How much of that does East China pay? Over 13 percent. I don't have. Over 13 percent of that number. Of that number, yes. Okay, Correct. thank you. It I, goes I, by the runs. Okay. Usually that piece is in there, but I don't see it in here. Who's in there? I saw it today. Here you are, right down at the bottom, Ralph. Well, um, where it says emergency call volumes. Yeah, right there is. That's a three-year average is 14, I guess. So, so we we pay at the three years. We pay the three-year average of that. Right. Of that. Okay, I just didn't understand it. And it goes by the number of calls we had in 15, 16, okay. 13, 14, and 15. Okay. I have no other comments. So we paid 53,000. Yeah. 
Actually, but I mean, it seems actually every we've got year Corin here tonight. Well, maybe I ought to come up with a whole lot of comments, though, on the you could. <laughs> you could. Actually, I don't have any tonight, so. Oh, this is the first <laughs> time, Ralph. <laughs> and I didn't know you were going to be here. I don't. Mm. Got to, all right, thank you. Anyway. I have nothing else. All right. So nobody else has any questions? We have a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll make that motion. I'll support. All right, we have a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to disbursements, we have bills of $39,249.94. We have a payroll of $86,634.44. We have ACH payments of $13,403.29 for a total disbursement of $139,290.67. I'll make a motion we pay the bills in the amount of $139,290.67. I'll support. Okay, it's been moved in support of that we pay the bills. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Bitsalis. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Mr. Knotts. Yes. Motion carries. We pay the bills. Now we're moving on to new business. But before new business, we'll do the proclamation for John Warwick for his years of service. So I guess we'll do it up in front, John. Get on TV. We didn't have TV when you were on the board, did they? I'm just going to read the proclamation. This is recognizing John Warwick's service to East China Township, whereas John Warwick was hired by East China Township on May 18th. Uh, 1992 and chose to retire from the position of sewer plant, a wastewater plant operator effective March 31st, 2016. And whereas John, prior to being hired, was a full time wastewater plant operator, was appointed to and served on the planning commission on December 19, 1983, and was appointed to serve on the township board as a trustee on October 6, 1986. And then was appointed and served on the Zoning Board of Appeals on November 21, 1988. And whereas John has been very helpful to the residents and fellow employees of East China and has been willing to perform the task placed before him energetically and efficiently and has thereby earned the name for himself and the confidence of the people of East China and the members of the Township Board. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the board, speaking on behalf of the employees, the residents of East China Township, publicly go on record in expressing recognition to John as a valued employee and sincere appreciation for his 33 years of public service and our best wishes for his future health and happiness. And be it further resolved that the proclamation be entered into the minutes of the East China Township Board and that a copy thereof be delivered to John as a reminder of the valuable years he has given to public service to the citizens of East China Township. Thank you, John. <laughs> now he's all yours, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Better find a hobby, John. Yeah. <laughs> Have a long and healthy retirement. And you don't have to stay if you don't want to. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you want to say a few words? No? Okay. <laughs> There's a chance to speak on TV. Uh, no? Okay, moving on to new business. We have an appointment of Joanne Cottrell to the Zoning Board of Appeals through May 7th, 2019. So moved. Is she agreed to uh, serve? What's that? Is she agreed to serve? Correct. To serve? Okay, I'll support. It's been moved in support of that. We appoint Joanne Cotter to the Zoning Board of Appeals through May 7, 2019. Is there any further discussion? No, she does a good job. That'd be okay. Fun. 
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item, new business number two, the hire of a sewer plant operator. Um, the past couple weeks we've had it out there applications for people for the for John's job. Um, I think we got eight or nine uh, applications. We narrowed it down to three, we or four, we interviewed four, and the committee was uh, Chuck, our sewer plant operator, or supervisor, um, Dwayne Loper from the water plant, and Blaine from the DPW and myself. We interviewed the candidates. We came down with two names we brought to the board, a first choice and a second choice. Um, our first choice is Matt Williamson. That was the, the pick of the committee. And we recommended that we hire him um, to fill the job that John had. Do you want to say anything, Chuck? Or? Um, no, I think he's going to be, a, if we hire him, going to be a good candidate. He has experience. Um, he has a D license in wastewater already. Um, we can kind of groom him to fit into our organization. Um, okay. Is he willing to go on to get more licenses? Is he oh, yeah, that's, that's a big Right. He, right. He wants to definitely do that. Okay. Good. That was part of our criteria. Was oh, okay. That we wanted to. That was one of the questions. One of the questions we had. Yeah. I, just out of sheer curiosity, I look at item number three on yeah. the agenda tonight. Got another one retiring. Uh, We're going to move you, down to that. I'm just one. Yeah. Do, since you've already interviewed. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to replace Glenn tonight. I would rather do it in two weeks. Okay, thank you. No problem. Until everybody's had a little bit more discussion on it. We'll, we'll, when we get down to that, we'll have a discussion on that. All right. So does anybody uh, have any questions about this, Matt? I... Nope. I seem satisfied with them. Mark. Yeah, and Chuck is, and Dwayne, and... and, and Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead. So you want to make that a motion? I'll make a motion that we... I'm sorry, what was his name? Matt uh, Williamson? Matt Williamson, yes. Uh, I make a motion that Matt Williamson be hired uh, in the wastewater treatment plant as an uh, operator. I'll support. Okay, it's been moved and supported that we hire Matt Williamson to replace John in the as a water plant or wastewater plant operator. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Um, Mr. Blackstock, yes. Mr. Knotts? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Mr. Patsalis? Yes. Mr. Boda? Yes. Mr. Simons? Yes. Motion carries. We have. So your procedure now, Larry, is going to be to offer him the position? Yes, we have. If he accepts the position? We haven't even told him yet we're going to, until we got authorization right. to hire. So, I mean, if he doesn't accept, we will probably go to the number two. We probably should okay. have that as our backup. Right, that's what I was going to say, if we had that. Do you want to make another motion to do that? Um, the second one was Brett Ames. Um, Can we just put that into one motion that are, if we hire Matt Williamson to replace him and if he turns the job down, then you go to number two? Or yeah, why don't we separate? just make it another motion and then, because we've already voted on the other one. Did you guys hear that? Well, I know. Yeah. I'll make a motion that if Matt Williamson does not accept the position, <laughs> that we go to the number two candidate. Okay, I'll support that. Right, it's been moving to support it also that we're, if Matt Ways is unavailable, that we go to the, the second one, which is Brett Ames. Um, any further discussion? Yeah, I'd like the wastewater supervisor to tell us a little about, about number two. Uh, he's a very knowledgeable person, too. Brett, he has a B license, right? No, C license. Or C license, I'm sorry. Uh, he's currently working for the city of Baltimore. He is from Marine City. Okay. A little bit younger. Probably five years less experience than this gentleman here. Okay, thank you. And they'll give a two-week notice then, so you'll have your man in about two weeks, or mm -hmm. is it right away? Yes, yeah, so yeah, we'll call tomorrow okay. on that one. Okay. So is there any further discussion on the uh, that motion to hire the second one, if the first one doesn't qualify? 
or is unavailable. Hearing none, roll call, please. <clears throat> Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Petzalis. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Knotts. Yes. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, now we're going to move on to new business item three: the resignation of Glenn Van Dries as a sewer power plant, a sewer plant operator, effective April 22nd, uh, 2016. Now we have another vacancy in the water plant. Um, give any I'd like to discuss now if we are going to how we're, are we going to replace him or how, what's what's the board's pleasure here? Yeah, I'd like to see us uh, operate on the four uh, that letter that we got from, uh, from the uh, superintendent. Uh, I have it here. I don't know where it's at. That we did operate. From the state, we did operate. Uh, What's the date of that letter? Uh, three there? operators plus one superintendent from that was that was before August or July of 2005. Prior to August of 2005, the staff was comprised of three operators plus one superintendent. I'd like to try it for a while to see how it works rather than go in and replace one another one as we're going to have to probably start cutting back because if something's going to happen here with the Edison in a few years and we're going to get hit hard. What's your thought on that show? My only concern is right now the staff of four operators, we split our operators into two, team, two teams and two and um, two of them are involved in the lab, which is normally an all-day thing, uh, and then they're, they're involved in operations also. But the other two are heavily involved in maintenance, and like I said in my request to hire a job replacement, uh, that's exactly why your plant is in the condition it is today, is because of that, that team of operators that you have are taking very good care of the plant. I was really surprised when I the, plant when I started, oh, well, the last year we lost three of them. What's that? In the last year we've lost three out of that plant. Three operators? Yeah. John? Uh-oh. I didn't have one. Glenn and Dia. 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 The superintendent yeah. left, yeah. and then uh, <coughs> I forget who the other one was, and then John. It's been Dan Van Dries is leaving, and John. So it's three. So now it's going to be it's going to be a struggle while we get these this guy on board for a little bit. And, uh, I just don't want to see anything deteriorate. I think we have a pretty good relation with the DEQ uh, as far as our operations and the way that uh, we take care of the plant, and they look at that also when they come and do their yearly recon inspection. Um, they take that all into consideration for future. Uh, violation of things that may, may come up. Just, um, it scares me a little bit not to have the staff that you have currently. Would that involve any overtime working with a, a three-man crew? Uh, yeah, probably will. Um, every third weekend is probably going to be consistent overtime. Right now, we, we don't have hardly any overtime at all except for holidays. Or when somebody's on vacation, and since I've been here, they have been a lot of overtime. Well, I'd like to have uh, let the board have a couple weeks to digest this and, and do their own homework on it and see, go over and see Chuck or see what we got there. Uh, yeah, please come by the plant. Take a tour so you can see exactly what you have there and how well it's been taken care of. Right. It, it's amazing. Because this wasn't part of uh, to hire the uh, replacement for Glenn. Really, we have to make a motion to accept his resignation and retirement. <coughs> Any particular reason why he resigned? What's that? Any particular reason why he resigned? Now he's retiring, is what he told us, he right? Said he's retiring. He's retiring. Yeah, he's 32. He's going to retire. He's retired. I should retire now. He's retired. Retired, yeah. 
Maybe he's just tired. So, so I think a, a motion would be in order to um, accept the resignation and retirement of, of Glenn Van Driesch. So move. Support. It's been moved and supported that we accept the resignation and retirement of, of Glenn Van Driesch. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we'll put that on the next um, agenda for the, in two weeks to talk about the replacement. I mean, unless we want to have the discussion now, but I think it should come up then. And I would recommend that we don't go through the interviewing process again because we're going to get the same people and we've already interviewed and it's only a couple weeks. That will be up to the board to decide that. Maybe a number two more will be able to. Right. If we decide to go or whatever. So. With that, we'll move on to new business uh, four. Discuss dog leash law and kayak launch site update from park chairman Cindy Boda. Hi. My name is Cindy Boda. I'm the chair of the Park Commission. Um, I'd like to just remind people that um, we have a leash law in our park and we expect people to follow that leash law. Uh, I don't want to be sound mean, but I spoke with the sheriff today and we can enforce that leash law. Um, I know you. everybody thinks their dog is great and would never do anything to anybody else. But it, it does affect other people walking in the park, people that have their dogs on leashes. Um, many people are scared of dogs coming right up to them that's not on a leash. And um, our park manager tries very hard to remind people of that in the summer when she's there. Um, so we want everyone to remember that there is a leash law in the township. There is a leash law in the park. And we do provide a dog park area to take your dog off of the leash. If you want to let them run, um, I would encourage you to take advantage of that area. And then pick up after your dogs um, this time of the year in the spring. It's Everybody's been walking through the winter, and we'd really like your help in picking up after your own dogs. And. I'd like you to remember too that you're responsible for your dog. If your dog is off a leash and it does bite someone or it, it does some damage, you are financially and legally responsible for your dog. And I don't mean to sound mean. We want everyone to be able to enjoy the park, but we also want everybody to be comfortable using the park. And then um, tomorrow our canoe launch is gonna be delivered and on Thursday it's going to be installed down at the site at Bell River and Springborn Road. So the launch will be open to kayaks and canoes and um, we'd also like people to know there's a no burn, no burning, no bonfires down there. The only place bonfires are allowed in any of our parks is if there's a a bonfire area or a grill or someplace like that that's enclosed and there is nothing like that down at that park where the canoe launch is. So once we get that in, we hope everybody will take advantage of using that canoe site and go from there. Okay, so, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Cindy. Any questions for uh, Cindy? Hearing none, okay. We'll move on to uh, new business item five, breaks and lunch clarification. <coughs> Does everybody know what we're talking about here? Oh yeah. I'll try to explain it. Unless one of you girls wanna get up there and explain. Um, what we're talking about here is, I, I, I guess the essence of the whole thing is can you take your lunch hour when you want? Can you work through your lunch hour when you want and call that part of your eight hour day? Um, go to the podium if you want. Yeah. Um, I don't think our major issue is with the breaks at all. Or it, the lunch hour or the lunch hour, we have no problem. But there was a memo that was stated from our office manager 
stating that we needed clarification because she and the supervisor put in something to place where we couldn't split our lunch hours into do two smaller breaks. And I'm not sure if she, you know, disobeyed, disregarded, but continued to do that. Um, and then when this came onto the agenda, made it sound like we had an issue with it. So we just wanted to clarify that we followed what was in place before and what is in place now. And we're not sure why something was made and then can just be disregarded. It creates a bad morale for us because we're not sure why it's separated. Or why it was enacted in the first place. We don't even know why. What Our policies that? seem what to change and we're not... for changing anything? Changing what, Sandy? The little meeting you had with all of us here in the office. Mm -hmm. What was the... What brought that on? We, just well, we don't even know. I see where some of the time cards had 20 minutes went to lunch, then 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I seen people that were adding, coming in early and staying two or three minutes and staying after seven minutes and adding that all up. Our work hours are from eight to 4.30, just what I explained. Yeah. Oh. And you get a half hour for lunch. Yeah. And the employee policy reads uh, the exclusion of 30 minutes for lunch. So we were all set until the next day and then the next day we took two 15 minute breaks unpaid because Back several months ago, uh, according to our insurance company, when you leave the site, it's the, the township is liable when you're on the payroll and driving your personal car out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's what was brought up. And, and we've been doing real good with that. If somebody goes, they punch out. But n the question now is can you, in my mind, the question is, if you punch out 15 minutes in the morning, don't get paid, go on your break, leave the site, and you punch out 15 minutes in the afternoon and then turn around and work through your lunch and get your eight hours pay. It, that's the question I think that the board should I, answer. I don't think yeah. we have a question with that. We're following that guideline and have been the policy well, prior. A, I, the I'm pol confusing. I thought that was the question. If it's not the question, what We're, is the question? We are wondering why the policy was changed and the next day it was broken with no accountability. It was what the office policy meeting. was, that's what I'm having trouble with. We what was the policy that, that got could, changed? We were told we could not split a half hour into two smaller breaks, which has not been a problem for the three of us standing here. The very next day, which we're not sure why it changed in the first place, the very next day it was broken and continued to be broken by our office manager. What changed in my meeting from what we were doing before? Tell me what the, the two splits, was. and then we were always approved if we took a, an appointment, for example. I had a lot of medical leave, so if I had an appointment at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I would count my half hour in there so I wasn't vacant from the office that long, approved by the office manager. Never had any problems, never told that was something that was wrong. That's always been how we follow. Well, if your lunch runs into your appointment, yeah, you can take it with it. And I said that. That's right. not what we That's not, at the meeting. Well, and regardless of the meeting, it's not the meeting, it's not the changing, it's the accountability. We're not sure why a policy changes and then our office manager does not follow. And when the office manager came in the next day, mm -hmm. I had that discussion, she requested to come to the board and if you read the employee policy, it says in there that she can do that. And that's fine, but you and told us on March here. 31st we could not that's do that anymore. I told her I didn't agree with what she was doing. And that's she exactly what I said to her. And back said, in September but, but 2000... Did we, did we, did we know this was open for interpretation there was never any explanation given after that happened we were very confused and in 2015 they took away our 15 minute breaks where we didn't leave the premises and when they told us that we could not do that we abided until it came to the board and was turned back so I'm confused on why there's something put in place on the 31st and like I said, I'm embarrassed that we're up here talking about this, so just let me tell you that, because this is not something I want to be doing. But the next day and seven times since then, it's been broken. So we're abiding by any policy that is set, but I'm not sure you guys if are anyone is understanding by the, the morale that I've it had creates. A problem with any of the three of you. The but it's never addressed directly. We're always addressed as a whole, and our policies are up and down. Well, in the future, I think your policies are going to be coming from the uh, township ma or the manager. The office manager is going okay. to be giving you your work direction, and we'll use the employee policy, and we'll go to the clerk, and we'll go to the okay. board, and we'll do it that way. If that's how we want to do everything instead of coming in to see me, I mean, th this didn't even affect you three. 
with the but you thing directed, that it was directed to all of us and I guess it's um, what was directed to you the whole meeting you uh, the office manager and yourself sat across from us and you and guys understood it exactly but we, we did not but she doesn't and, and we, that's why I had the meeting with her but it didn't stop so I'm wondering where the accountability her is. Her request was to come to the township board. She's not board. here. So no. are we going to stop it? I'm not forcing it? her to come no, here. We noticed that. Okay. So I just Like I said, it's embarrassing to be here for this, but these small things are amounting to a bad atmosphere within the office. We're, we've been a great team since Sharon left, and that is all we want to continue. And it makes it very frustrating. It makes it feel like it's unequal. And we're just looking for some resolution. To be so, so she's splitting up for lunch hour. Is that what she's doing? No, she's not taking a lunch hour. That's the question. Can you take the I, she's it, using she, the lunch hour and her lunch, lunch half hour as part of her eight hour work day? She can't do that. And I said I didn't agree with that. She can't do that. And I said we shouldn't be paying you for that because I didn't authorize her to work through lunch. And if you work through lunch, normally you would get time and a half yes. because it would take you out of the eight hour yep. number. Yes, and it's just to get something perfect. This is not personal. This is just, just a professional platform for the office. The rule is in that everybody follows the same rule. I think what this is all coming down to um, is it's accountability. I think, like Corinne said, this thing about the break is a foolish thing. Um, it really shouldn't have got to the point where it has gotten. Um, I, I don't see why the girls would want to split up your your breaks. I mean. You get vacation time, you get sick time, you want to do your things, you do that all on your sick time and vacation times. But as far as the board goes, I, I, as, as far as I'm concerned on the board, I think if you have your half hour lunches and we know that somebody's going to be gone from 11 to 11.30, 11.30 to 12, 12, then we can hold people accountable for what's going in the office. When you girls are taking your breaks anytime you want, you can have two of you taking one at the end of my 15 minutes while I'm going to leave 15 minutes early. Now we're down to one girl in the office. It poses a problem. I mean, anywhere I've worked, everywhere I've had people work for me, they get a half hour lunch and you take a half hour lunch. We don't break it up into 10 minute increments, 15 minute increments. I think the issue here is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's got to be good for everybody. And regardless whether the office manager likes it or not, when her supervisor tells her that you get a half hour lunch and you take it at one time, if she wants to bring it to the board, she still has to abide by your rule until this board I told overrides her that you. She continued to so do she it did it for way. six times after that. I know. In I my opinion, I think she should be written up for that. Okay. I don't I think, think she, she should, should continue to go on with that. She is an office manager. She's to take the order from you, and then you go from there. But what we do for these girls, I think, has to be the same thing that's done with the office right. manager, and they whether she likes it or not. Thing. I, I, and I think that's what their argument is. They've been abiding by it, and she is not. And this is just a little piece of the puzzle. There's a big puzzle out there. There's just a little piece. And I think it, it needs to get under control, and we need to handle it in a manner that's going to be equal for everybody. And regardless of how you want to do that or how I it say is, she should be paid for the half hour. That's what I told her at the time. I said she should have been paid that Friday. She, sh I had, the question was, how many hours did you pay? And she got paid for eight hours, and it should have been seven and a half. And that's what started why she wanted to come to the board. But it's on the agenda. She's not here, so it's up to us. As far as I'm concerned, I say she shouldn't get paid for the half hour. You know, the employees of this township, by law work for the supervisor. Correct. We provide the supervisor guidance in the form of various policies. And this one here is perfectly clear. The supervisor has great latitude in how he may have to have people work at, under different circumstances that may occur from on a day-to-day -day basis. But we have a basic policy. And frankly, I have said this before at other meetings, I think this is supervisor business. and. Uh, Unless, unless we want to clarify the policy, which I think is pretty dang clear right there. Yeah. Other than that, my position is supervisor needs to handle this. What do you think of the way we have it set up? What is your opinion? We've I, never had a problem. Ever. I, I think we part, abide by the rules. Well, and part of it, I don't want our, our, our issues seem to somehow get lost in translation to the board. <laughs> and Apparently. that is... You know, again, not a personal attack. It's more professional. I want to make sure that there's an open line of communication between us, if it even needs to get there. I mean, once again, we're talking about lunch breaks. I just, it is amazing to me that everything that comes to you is in a form of the staff would like to know. 
because it's not. We're perfectly happy. We're following the guidelines. Like I said, we're working as a great team. We just want to keep that going, but it, it, there has been some tension over something so silly. So that's all our goal is, to just keep that going. But you know, if anyone has any questions or concerns, so we'd like board, to meet So what is the board's feeling that we should, you can't, for your lunch, do we want people to, to take their half hour lunch or can they uh, figure that we into their eight hour we days? Had to. We were told no. we had they to. Should all, they should all be the same. It's, everybody takes a right half, here. everybody it's gets a half hour unpaid right lunch as to exactly which right. time they take it. You have to make some arrangements. Right. To we keep we stagger off. our lunch. Okay. They also get two 15 minute paid breaks if you stay on the premises. And the only reason for that is because if you leave the premises while you are being paid, you are legally on township business and we are liable for whatever happens. So if you have to leave the premises, then you got to clock out. And yeah. And I don't see anybody it. objecting to this, to no, tell you the truth. No, we're all doing it. You know, the other thing with the breaks being split, it's just a lack of communication. I mean, if there's something, you know, hey, i got to leave for 15 minutes. Just, you know, but it seems like going, I'm going, and we're, this is where we come to where we're short for a moment. Or, you know, like I said, just like a team. You want to get going with the team. You know, if communication. you're required to take the half hour lunch, what are they doing over there? We all have set times that we go. You'll get a half hour for lunch, take it, and you take your break in the morning and the afternoon. You don't come, you and know. if you do go work through your lunch, then we pay you for your lunch at time and a half rate. Yeah, and we've done that. Yeah, we've done it with all. The supervisor has that discretion. You know, so you need it. You have. Yeah, to, you the, can do it. The whole thing being yeah. alone, I, I was just back from surge. I didn't want to be by myself. You know, change. that wasn't to be silly about it. I, I just came back, and I think the one other time that happened, I was just going in. So I, I didn't want to be. I didn't know what was going on. How I was recovering. I didn't. It wasn't to get paid overtime. I did not feel comfortable being in my office, getting up and down with what I had done. Just so that's clear. And they, all three of them are doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. they, should, they should split. The, they split the lunch periods between them, so there's somebody here all, all the time at lunch hour. Correct. We tried to have and, two people. And they should all be treated the We already the same have time. set hours. We all, we, well, three we, of us pretty much go at the same with time. Any of that. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. I didn't think the problem was with you. But. It feels that way, and that's why we want to direct it. Directed yeah, it, appear, it yeah. appears to be that perhaps the supervisor and the office manager need to have a closed door discussion. Okay. And during that closed door discussion, I think we need to discuss the job description and the job duties of the <laughs> office manager. Okay. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah. Should be. Is that all you had then, or? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, well, thanks for coming. Thank you. I hope it cleared up something. It did very much. Thank you. Okay, so the policy is going to stay in force what we have there. Uh, they have to take a half minute for lunch. Half that that is the policy we're going to stick right. with right now. Unless it's authorized for two, if we need them to work overtime, then we can have them work overtime, but we're going right. to pay them for that. Yeah, right. That, the supervisor has wide discretion on that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Well, congratulations, yep. John. Congratulations. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, John. Don't get in too much golf now. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have unfinished business. We have the social media policy. Um, well, since I'm the one that caused all the trouble on that, I have read the new version of the social media policy, and I now have absolutely no objections to any part Good of it. Good deal. <laughs> is so is that a motion, Ralph? Yeah, that's a motion. I'll support. I moved in support of that we uh, adopt the uh, social media policy. Is there any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Simons. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Petzalis. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Knotts. Yes. Mr. Blackstack. Yes. Motion carries. Next, we're moving on to unfinished business. Item two is the bids for Rose Hill Cemetery tree removal, which we voted on the last contract or the last meeting. meeting. I thought so. And when uh, Blaine went to, uh, I believe it was Kevin's that had it? Yeah, Kevin's had it. Mm -hmm. Had it, and he said that we we didn't do it right. We added the, uh, he said you got to add the $900 for the, to drop the trees plus the removal. <laughs> and so that put him higher than the other two, which the other two became tied. Uh, Timbers and Biscarner became tied at $2,100. And I think it put him at 20 Seven twenty-eight, twenty-eight hundred. So, what 
Blaine is suggesting is that we do the 2100 and we don't do the stump grinding because uh, Blaine has some other trees, stumps he wants to get out. And he thought he would go up and rent the thing up at um, Jones's Rental and do those seven and the couple or three that he's got and get them all in one thing while he's doing it. So. The way Kevin's is written up here, it's 900 to drop the trees, and then he's got 1,500 to drop the trees and remove them. Mm -hmm. I know, that's how we read it. But that's how we read it, apparently. Yeah, but when he went to him, he said, no, 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 you, well, you got to add those two together. He should, so he should so you got to like you gotta add all that. three of those together for Kevin? So it would yeah. be 24, yeah. Right. Yeah, he, he wants that 900 on top of there. They both come out to 27. Well, one's 28, one's 27. And but we're not going to do the stump grinding on any of them, so we can eliminate that. Okay, that's 24. Is what then. Blaine is suggesting. So this is it makes Kevin price. still a little low. They are. So you have to pick one of the two. Kevin's is still low then without you take out the stump grinding because this corner's stump grinding it was so much. No. Oh, I'm he's sorry. I'm not adding the 1400 he's bucks seven, in. Ah, whatever mind. He's a gotcha. All right. Right, right. They're right. 2400. Right. The other two are 21. 900 plus 1500, 2400 then. Yes. Up to stumps. if we don't want to do the stumps. If we don't want to do the stumps, well, Blaine's the DPW guy. If he wants to do the stumps, that's I'm, what he I'm said. I'm happy to let him do them. Because <clears throat> we're going to have to rent the machine anyways. We got one out here in the yeah. side yard, and um, he's got a couple other ones. So we need a motion to readjust so, our so award to Kevin yeah. to delete uh, stump grinding and to have them drop the trees and to clear, remove all debris for a cost not to exceed $2,400. Um, 2100 How are we going to do that? Where are no, don't you have to have a, we have to have a motion to, to negate the last 24, he's nine and... Or whatever. Do whatever you want. It's 2100 not 24. Mm -hmm. Kevin's would be 24. Be 2100 not 24. Right. Okay, I see what you say. Yeah, we pro uh, Herb thinks that we should make a motion to negate the, yes. um, the Kevin's lawn care. Well, who made the motion? I don't know. But Just we a can minute. That in. I will tell you. Trustee oh. Nott, supported by Trustee Horn, moved to approve $1,800 for Kevin's lawn service. To remove seven trees. So so who, who made it? Mr. Nott. Okay. Yeah, I'll I, I make a motion to uh, withdraw my motion to uh, award the tree drop at the cemetery uh, to Kevin's lawn service. And, and you'll have to rescind your second. And Mr. That Horn. Was, did, did I support the, yeah. I'll, I'll withdraw my support. Okay, we have a withdrawal of a motion and a support. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now it's who do we award it to, Biscarner Tree Service or Timbers Tree Service? They're both $2,100 to drop the trees and cut them up. That's Larry, do you have any idea how much it costs for the, to, to rent the like stump grinder? I think it's like 150 bucks. Do you have any idea how much labor or how much time they're going to put in to do that or, or how much? Mm, it's, it's, yeah, it's probably going to take them yeah. a day, the best part of a day to do them all. Because I cut a tree down on the property. And it takes the, a while to grind Timbers are made stump, they grind the stump, and it took them maybe half an hour and they yeah. had it done. The thing is, we're going to award a bid for $2,100. Kevin's will do all of it for twenty-seven. So is it $600? Who, who's going to? Wait. Kevin's will do it all for, for $2,700. 24. 27. 27. And grind the stumps. It'll be $2,100 if Biscarners or Timbers does it. So my question is, is $600 going to cover a whole day labor and renting a stump grinder? Yeah, I don't know. Um, they also have the other two. What? He's going to have to rent the stump grinder He's going anyway to, to, do, to, to do, do some other trees. We'd have trees. to have him come over and, and grind. Oh, so we're going to rent it anyway for the other we're two. We're going to rent it anyways. Okay. He thought he'd kill two birds with one okay. stone. He's getting it anyways to do other jobs. Okay. All right. Well, he's got other jobs to do and everything. <laughs> right. that, that's fine. I just didn't know. That's why I was asking the question because, I mean, if it's going to cost us $700 to do it, and we're going to pay more, but if he's going to use it for another job, that's good. I recommend Tim Burge. You make that a motion? I'll make a motion we award the contract to Timber Street Service. For $2,100? $2,100. Not to exceed $2,100. I'll okay. support. 
It's been moved and supported that we have Timbers Tree Service cut the trees down in the cemetery not to exceed $2,100. I got a question. Are we in the trapping service. ourselves in the same problem again? According to Blaine, he checked it out <laughs> and he said no, that they said they would do it for the $2,100. They will drop the trees and remove the debris for $2,100. Everything but stump it. Yep. All right. Okay. That was the question I asked him. He because said all, all he checked that out. Are, so. All three of them are the same. It, you know, they all got to drop the trees and then they got. Right. So, is there any further the discussion on the road. Timbers motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Nuts. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Petzalas. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Okay. Motion carries. We award it to Tim Timbers. All right. Next on unfinished business, we have the weight trim recommendation for the River Road water main bids. This came two weeks ago. A motion was made to give this to our engineer to look over these bids. Um, I gave you a handout, which I just got late this afternoon, and um, he uh, called these three contractors, construction companies, and went through the whole thing with them. Um, some of them didn't do certain things in there, and, and they've added, they've amended their, their bid. Um, Murray is still the lowest at, I believe it was $63,200. Larry, is, is that the one that's doing the work in the township now, Murray? Where? The township down on the south end, or the township. Are they doing any work there? No, but Murray's done a lot of work for us. They've done, uh, um, I think they did the uh, they did the lift station down here at Recor, okay. and they did the uh, water line on Francis Street. The two that come to my work. mind. But the recommendation is to give it to Murray Underground if you're going to compare apples to apples for sixty-three thousand two hundred. Yeah, he's low. I'll make a motion that we award the contract to Murray under at the. Recom follow the recommendation of the township engineers and award it to Murray Underground in the amount of $63,200. Support. It's been moved and supported that we award the bid to Murray Underground. Is there any other discussion on this? Hearing none, roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Petzalas. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Knotts. Yes. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Ocean carries. We give it to Murray for sixty-three thousand two hundred. Okay, moving along. We're uh, we've already done the proclamation for John. Uh, announcements. Uh, vote school election May third. And next is on to member comments. Mr. Horn. I have none tonight. Okay. Mr. Pasales. Um, I just have one thing. Um, in the years that we've been on the board when something is not on our agenda, it's not put in the packet on a Thursday, we usually bring it up to the board and for a discussion item only. Is that how we're going to continue to proceed with that? Or I don't want no surprises in our packets, and then we act on it on Monday. If it's not in our packet by Thursday, I think it can be brought up for discussion. We can discuss it, but I don't think any action should be taken by the board until we have all the information and all the facts in front of us. And we aired, or I aired, on the last one with the... Um, yeah, we had one last week. D made the motion to hire the 20-hour 20 20 part-time person, and we didn't have a discussion. But we hadn't... You weren't here, and nobody contested okay. it. But, um, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. But the Angel. understanding is In that In the that's future, we should have that. I think I talked to, to Sandy Doctor this morning about it. We wanted to add something to the agenda today, another appointment, and I told you no. Um, so I'm trying to do that. Now. Okay. All right. I, 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 there's going to be cases. Uh, well, I can't say it can yes. never happen. I mean, something's going to come up that's that important that we're going to have to do it. But um, well, as, like today, as a like rule, we're not going to. If it's an emergency. I mean, if it's an emergency and something, something comes up, I can understand right. it. And that's why I said today I didn't want to do the Glenn Van Driesch today because it's, it's just on here to accept his resignation and retirement. <coughs> so. And that's all I have. Okay. I have nothing, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Blackstone? Uh, nothing, thank you. Uh, Ralph? 
I was wondering if we need to mention that elections are coming up pretty soon, and there may be vacancies in some different township positions, and if some of the citizens out there would like to get involved with township, running the township or being involved in running the township, they all think about putting in a, a petition, put your name on the ballot, uh, and you can join this illustrious group or be <laughs> one, of, one of us. And uh, uh, it's always a good thing to have a, a say in the area in which you live. That's all I have. Thank you, Ralph. Um, just a little thing about the last meeting. We've sent a letter out to Mr. Cohn over here on Meisner Road. Uh, we haven't heard anything back yet. But um, uh, The other thing is that last meeting we had that... Um, that sewer on Hathaway that needs to be regrouted. I had uh, Blaine check that out. You know, it, the motion was to accept it as long as it was, uh, you know, a compatible price, comparable. It's actually a lower price than what they did before. And Blaine and I seem to think it's because we're doing 160 different joints in the pipe. You know, they're doing more so they can do it while they're all set up. Yeah. Um, it, it's a few dollars a, a joint. Of, maybe 20 or 30 dollars a joint less than what some of the other bids were. We went back to 012. So oh, good. I said, well, we'll, well award I, the bid, then it's cheaper than any of the other yeah, ones we, we get a, And we got to do it anyway. So. Yeah, we get a discount on volume. Right, the more you do. So, um, With that, that's all I had. Uh, I guess a motion to adjourn would be in order. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 822. Support. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion to adjourn at 822. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.